Hey, welcome back to uh, Dad Deleted, the podcast and the YouTube channel. I do appreciate you guys uh, coming back. Heck, I appreciate me coming back. Um, this is one of those things where um, you realize uh, what a daunting task it is to talk about yourself because um, as much as you think you like to do it, um, when you're dealing with something like this, it's not always fun. But, you know, even just from the first uh, episode, I've gotten some positive feedback. And uh, I do appreciate that, uh, the folks that have responded. And, and look, I'll take constructive criticism if there's some to be had. I, I want this to be as entertaining, uh, and that's uh, a completely inappropriate word, but it has to be entertaining for people to tune in and for people to stay and listen. So if you've got something to say, if you've got some constructive cr criticism, uh, please uh, give it to me because, again, none of this is valid or, or even this is not even a worthwhile venture um, if people aren't staying and listening to the content and then being able to get something educational out of it. So uh, that's on me uh, as the provider. I, I'm supposed to be um, interesting enough. The content's supposed to be interesting enough so that you want to stay and that you want to listen and that then you get something out of it. So um, with that being said, the second episode, I'm really going to talk about the, the beginnings, right? Like, uh, and I'm going to give like a real quick five minute uh, introduction about just the end and then the very, the end of the marriage we'll say, and then, um, and then the beginning of, of, the alienation and um, and it happened very quickly. So uh, first of all, um, late 2010, um, uh, we separated, and uh, and just so everybody knows, this was not some spur of the moment thing. This was not some surprise. Um, I started talking about divorce with my ex-wife uh, probably seven or eight months before maybe maybe even longer. Uh, that was the first time I brought up. Then I told her I wanted a divorce um, six months, five months before I actually left. Um, and we did go to therapy. We did go to counseling uh, for about three months, and that was ineffective. Um, but in all fairness, um, at that point, I'm one of those people that I I'll stay with something for a long time, but then when I make the decision, I kind of make that decision. And so at that point, um, based on why we were getting divorced, I didn't see any change that would be coming or at least any change that would be uh, true and, uh, and honest. Um, so I take responsibility for that. Um, and just in case I, it needs to be repeated, um, even when divorce is a necessary thing, it's a horrible thing. Uh, when kids are involved, especially. And so I do not advocate divorce. At the same time, I, I get it. I, I've been there and I understand it. And so um, I, I hope you withhold judgment on me. Um, just like, I, you know, I'll withhold judgment uh, on others as much as I, as much as I humanly can. Um, but, uh, so in early 2011, uh, I had, uh, just, uh, I just moved out, been maybe out of the house. We were on the East coast, um, maybe a month and, um, my ex-wife, we're just going to call her mom at this point. Uh, mom took the kids and moved back to, Texas, which is where we had come from, and that was, I, I was not uh, expecting that, um, and you got to remember, we were, I was, I was about, I, I guess, 14, uh, 14 or 15, 16 hours away from Texas at that point, so the odds that I would see my kids at, uh, would be, you know, rare. Um, so what I did immediately is I began sending out resumes to, uh, to the Gulf coast. So, and when I say the Gulf coast, I sent resumes to, 
uh, Houston, Austin, Dallas, San Antonio, and New Orleans, um, because New Orleans was another close area. And the first and only job offer I got uh, within that time frame where I was looking uh, was for uh, a job in Louisiana. And so that would get me about four hours away from the kids. So I took it. And that brings us to uh, the spring of 2011. And very shortly after that, um, I start uh, every other weekend visitation. And, and the alienation started very quickly. And, and at the time, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize that's what it was, and I didn't realize what role my mom was playing in, in this process. But I'll tell you what happened. Um, so my kids at the time, I had three kids, and at the time uh, they were uh, eight and six and four. And my oldest, who's my daughter, uh, when I would call uh, to talk to the kids on the phone, uh, she wouldn't talk to me. And mom would tell me, well, she's mad at you because of the divorce and, and, uh, or the pending divorce, the separation. And, and, um, and she, uh, she doesn't want to talk to you. Now, my two sons, who are the, the younger, uh, younger uh, kids, they talked to me, and that w- everything was fine. Um, but my oldest daughter would not talk to me. But when we would have our every other weekend um, visitation, our custody time, um, and, w- and by the way, we had no court orders at this point. Um, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm giving 50% of my salary uh, to her, just to be clear, so my, you know, my kids were not, uh, I, I did not abandon my family, I did not abandon my kids. I was voluntarily, without a court order, giving 50% of my income uh, to my uh, future ex-wife and my kids, really, my kids. So, because um, I know that's a question some, some of you may have. Um, but anyway, on, on our visitation, on our custody times, um, my daughter was perfectly fine. It, w- it was as if there were two different people. Uh, the person who was really angry at me and didn't want to talk to me on the phone, but then when we were together, she's loving and, and affectionate and, and playful and not at all uh, showing any signs of anger or bitterness towards me. And I remember after a couple of those saying um, to mom, uh, hey, why don't you ask uh, our daughter, and we'll call her Sarah, right, for, for these purposes. Uh, hey, why don't you, uh, that's not her real name, uh, why, don't you, why don't you get Sarah to talk to me on the phone? And she said, well, I'm, I'm not going to make her do something. I'm not going to force her to talk to you on the phone. Now, at the time, I didn't realize that, but that is a primo example of alienation is when a parent uh, uses the excuse that they're not going to force their child to do something. And it's usually something like, it's not, um, strangely enough, it never comes up when uh, a parent never says, well, I'm not going to force my child to do homework, or I'm not going to force my child to brush their teeth, or I'm not going to force my child to go to bed at a reasonable hour, or I'm not going to force my child to turn off video games. But magically, when it came to, hey, talk to dad, uh, well, I'm not going to force her to do that. And so I said to her, uh, I'm, but it, I think it would be, we, we can't heal, we can't move past this um, if we don't talk, and I think that would be beneficial for, for her and for me. Uh, and it seems as when we're together, I don't see this issue. Um, and she just said, well, I'm not going to force her. And... Uh, there's going to be a reoccurring uh, truth through this whole story, which is uh, one of the biggest problems I had is I was far too passive with taking things immediately uh, to a judge uh, to deal with these things. I don't know that it would have made a huge difference in the long run in 
mom's behavior. But I think if I had had the courts involved earlier, there would have been a, an official trail as opposed to just my paper trail and documentation of, of what was going on between me and mom. The courts needed to be involved because here's the thing. When these folks, when these moms and dads who are alienating parents, when they go after the targeted mom or dad, the biggest thing they have in their favor is keeping things between you and them, right? Or them and you. Because as long as they can gaslight you, as long as they can make you believe you're the one that's the problem, that you're the one who's crazy, uh, that no, there's no problem at all. Uh, I don't know why you're bringing this up. I don't know why you're making such a big deal, right? As long as there's no independent third party, they can do that all day, right? And you're just the one that thinks you're crazy when in reality there is something going on, but, you know, you, you just you don't realize how severe it is and you don't realize what's to come. So my, my thought to you would be, do not be passive. And um, I'll give you a name, Dr. Richard Warshak. Uh, he is an expert in parental alienation. He, uh, he's in Texas, uh, in Dallas, I believe. Uh, and I believe he's affiliated with the University of Texas. Um, but he has a book called Divorce Poison. If you have not read that book, go buy that book. And by the way, there will be other authors and other experts that I will talk about through throughout this podcast. Uh, but Dr. Richard Warshak is the first person that I became aware of. Um, and I'll tell you this, if you read his book, Divorce Poison, uh, and then if you are going through uh, parental alienation as a targeted parent, the very first thing that you'll do is you will swear to yourself that your ex has purchased this book and then is using it as a playbook. Because when I first read that book in 2013, I, that's exactly what I thought. And so, um, so anyway, that's just uh, uh, some, some valuable information for you. Um, so now let's move forward. So that was in 2011 we were dealing with that. Now in uh, 2012, uh, early 2012, the divorce is final. Uh, We've been doing, uh, you know, uh, custody. I've got, uh, ev you know, every other weekend. Uh, I am maximizing my time in the summer. I am getting, you know, we're splitting holidays. Um, in uh, late 2012, November of 2012, um, mom remarries. So now there's stepdad in the picture. And, and full disclosure, I had remarried uh, in um, early 2012. So I'm, I'm, I'm remarried at this point um, to a wonderful woman uh, who, by the way, without her, like I don't survive to this point. I don't fight to this point for my kids. My kids had an advocate. Um, and I, I promise you, as far as stepmoms go, she's in the Hall of Fame. She's a top one percenter. Um, she won't tell you that because she thinks she made a lot of mistakes and she struggled with, uh, you know, emotionally how to deal with it. But, and we'll talk to her at some point, I'll bring her on and, and we'll talk about things from the step parents perspective and how difficult that is. By the way, you know, you think this is tough on the parent that's being alienated, man, try being the step parent, try being, you know, try being the person who doesn't have the natural uh, love for your children, right? And then they have to deal with this. If, if they don't kill somebody, they're a saint. That's as far as I'm concerned. Um, so nobody died. So my wife is a saint. Um, but anyway, late 2012. So uh, Christmas break, uh, I've got the kids and my youngest, who is four at the time. Um, he is, uh, he, he, he is calling me by my first name. So um, we'll just say Larry. Well, my, my name's not Larry, but we'll say Larry. And he's calling me Larry 
he's calling me by my first name, calling me by my first name. And I'm, I, I say to him, well, son, no, I'm dad. Um, Larry's my first name, but that's not what you would call me. You call me dad. And other people who aren't um, my kids, then, then um, you know, they would call me by my first name, but you call me dad. Or you can call me daddy. Um, and he said, well, no. Um, and, and he used uh, stepdad's, uh, he said, he said, no, um, he, and he used his, his he said, no, um, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of how I'm going to say this without using names, but he's going to say, no, um, stepdad is my dad, and you're, and you're Larry. And I said, well, no, I'm like, who told you that? Well, mommy told me that. Well, he's four, so I think, yeah, you know, he might be confused, right? Fair enough. So I, I go to my two older kids who, you know, at this point are, you know, I think seven and nine. And I said, hey, um, so, you know, little guy's calling me first by my first name. And he's saying that stepdad is dad. And, um, and then also, by the way, he also said that his last name is stepdad's last name. He said, I'm no longer, a, and, and we're going to switch these up to like, well, we're going to say I'm Larry Johnson, the basketball player. Um, he's going to say, well, we're not Johnsons, but we're Smiths. So I'm a Smith. And, I, and I, I said to him, no, you're not a Smith. You're a Johnson. He's like, no, no. And he got really upset. He was truly confused and, and hurt that, that I was telling him that what he thought was wrong. And he's four years old. You can confuse a four-year-old pretty easily. But he was really hurt and upset about it. But my older kids validated that, yes, in fact, that mom did say to that, that I'm Larry uh, and that they are Smiths. Now, she said to them, well, uh, and, and by the way, I'm going to show this. I'm going to show this documentation. I've got some emails from her uh, and... Uh, where she actually says, yes, um, I told the kids that their legal last name is Johnson, but they are also Smiths and because they're a part of the family. Uh, and I just told her, I said, you can't say that. And she accused me then of upsetting the kids and making a mountain out of a molehill. And um, I even got an email from her, and I will show this one as well, where she says that, well, the reason the kids call stepdad dad and they say that they're Smiths, that they have his last name, is because they admire him so much and that uh, he's, a, he's a strong person in their life. Now, remember, he's only been in their, as far as I'm aware, too, they, it's not like they had a long courtship or something. They, uh, I think they may have dated a few months and then they get married and then within... Less than a month uh, of the marriage, I'm first name, no, 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 no longer dad. He's dad, and the last name's changed. Um, so let that sink in, right? Um, she even sends me an email at some point uh, from some step-parent uh, website where they said, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing when... Um, then the child should have the decision, the choice, um, to uh, to call a step parent, uh, you know, dad or mom. Um, and while I would ag I would agree, if there is no mom or or dad in the picture, um, if the relationship comes to the point where it's so close that the child wants to 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 call stepdad dad or stepmom mom, I, in principle I don't have any problem with that but when you're when you have a dad uh, then you're confusing a, a, a child and especially young children it's it's one thing look if if a kid is 16 years old and he wants to call stepmom mom okay well that's fine um, but how did he get there right and and a four-year-old doesn't get there on their own so uh, and we all know that um, so anyway uh, I emailed her about it. She responded by saying they admired stepdad. Uh, kids know what their legal last name is. Um, and she, uh, she said I was getting work up, 
worked up over nothing. Um, and this is also, here's, a, here's another uh, little uh, helpful hint. Uh, an alienating parent, one of the very first things they're going to do, and she did this, and I'll, I'll include a uh, screenshot of uh, the email where she brings it up. She said that she was beginning to now, even at this time, uh, beginning to say, well, my home is dangerous, that, that I'm not watching the kids, and the kids are uh, being put into harmful situations. And she also mentioned that I don't feed the kids, right? And uh, so her example would be, well, the kids didn't eat breakfast until 11 on Saturday. Okay, except guess what? They slept till 1030, right? So, um, but that's not, you know, that there's no logic or rationale to it. It's just, oh, you didn't feed the kids breakfast till 11. Yeah, well, they woke up 30 minutes before and then we fed them. Uh, I guess I could like, you know, shovel food down their throats while they're asleep, but I don't think, I don't think that's going to work. And I, I don't think that's uh, particularly kind or sweet. Um, and by the way, I will tell jokes uh, at points throughout this podcast. Some of them are going to hit, most of them are going to miss. So just let those go. So anyway, uh, that's it for today. Um, we'll, uh, have another one of these. If you guys like them, uh, please, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, comment on these, please tell me, get me some feedback. Uh, I want to be able to help you and I want to do the very best job I can so that you're interested and so that if you're interested, then you're going to hear these things that you need to hear so that maybe you don't end up uh, struggling with this for years and years and years uh, like we did. So anyway, uh, best, of, uh, best of, uh, of the day to you. And remember, uh, love your kids. <laughs>